Ham United face a severe challenge at Upton Park from those cup giant killing specialists, Bolton Wanderers. While Millwall would pull off one of the shocks of the night if they can keep out Nottingham Forest. Hello, good evening. Just 16 teams left in this season's Coca-Cola Cup, all very aware that victory means a place in the quarter-finals. Ian St. John is with us again, Ian. Before the action, a word about Brian Little's move to Villa from Leicester. The High Court today decided Brian Little could go to Selhurst Park tonight. Well, I think Brian Little has lost a lot of credibility within the game, Bob, for doing that, because to walk out on Leicester City, who have been very good to him, as you well know, taking him from Darlington, and then within days take his backroom staff with him, from Leicester and leave them totally bankrupt of staff and join Aston Villa. I think, as I say, you know, Brian has lost a lot of credibility and he was beginning to make a real name for himself. So we're all disappointed, I think, of what Brian Little did. OK, thank you, Ian. Well, we stay with Brian Little because our first stop tonight is Selhurst Park, where the holders of the Coca-Cola Cup, Villa, will need all the inspiration of their new manager and that he can provide to withstand a Crystal Palace side who are now finding their feet nicely in the Premiership. Your commentator is Brian Moore. Well, a pleasant task there for the new Aston Villa manager, Brian Little, but he's had a past few days that he won't forget in a hurry. His managerial switch, of course, even had a flirtation with the High Court today. He says today alone has been more like three weeks. He's also had to pick a side for this important Coca-Cola Cup uh, tie. Without the suspended Andy Townsend, Gary Parker will again have an important role in the midfield for Villa. Dwight York returns there. And there's a second game of the season for David Farrell. He'll play down the left. Palace are much more settled. One defeat only in the last seven games. It's the side that drew here with Southampton at the weekend. Their good form based on a solid defence where the keeper Nigel Martin and the centre-backs Richard Shaw and Chris Coleman have been absolutely outstanding. Five clean sheets in the last seven games bear testimony to that. Our referee tonight is Gary Willard from Worthing in Sussex. So for 90 minutes, Villa can forget all the events off the field. There's a real job to be done here in defence of the trophy Ron Atkinson side won at Wembley last spring when they beat Manchester United in the final of the Coca-Cola Cup. They're playing tonight against a form team with this good recent form by Palace. Five wins in the last seven games, only one defeat. But here's Damien Atkinson now for Villa in this change strip of theirs. Green and black with red stripes and a goal kick for Nigel Martin and Crystal Palace. Alan Smith absolutely delighted with the side's recent form after a really shaky start on their return to the Premiership. An accidental tumble there. Armstrong and Yogu. A free kick given to Palace. That's a good shot! Oh, a fabulous shot! Could Palace finish it off? Dean Gordon. What a tremendous shot that was. And a really acrobatic piece of goalkeeping by Bosnich. Just managed to turn the ball onto the post. And Palace just couldn't get anybody up quickly enough for the simple tap-in. A great piece of keeping. And Villa get it away. The corner comes in. And Bosnich is a simpler one this time. Well, Dean Gordon, two stunning goals already this season. And uh, very nearly a third with a fantastic shot. Dwight York, this the last couple of games. Here comes Dean Gordon. Now can Armstrong get on the end of this? It was a good header, hitting it back from where it's come. It's always difficult for keepers, but uh, Gordon did well again. A third high cross in, Armstrong locking it back across the Villa goal, but just wide of the far post. Daly Atkinson getting up a real head of steam here. Lays it for David Farrell, crossed in by him to Saunders, crossed it in superbly, and somehow Palace kept it out. Played in nicely there, and Saunders in fact whipped that in from an impossible angle against the post. 
So the woodwork hit twice here by Saunders there and a thundering drive earlier pushed onto the post from Gordon by Bosnich. Armstrong playing it in towards a deep end. Oh my goodness. Bosnich very nearly misjudged that one. You'd have to ask Chris Armstrong whether he meant that as a shot or whether that was a cross that was suddenly became a shot. But it certainly caused Bosnich problems and very nearly crept in. Here's the corner. Armstrong trying to get to it. Again, easier this time for Bosnich. Now, was that a cross or was it a shot? It very nearly finished in the back of the net, that's for sure. Oh, a bad kick out by Bosnich. Can Armstrong, well, he's brought down by Yogyu. What will he get for this? Whether he was the last defender or not. My feeling was that Earl Barrett was covering, but certainly is at least a yellow card. Bill King protesting. It's a red card. He's been sent off. Well, it was a bit of a mistake in the first place that suddenly put Armstrong in possession. The Ogu then. Now, the feeling could be that there was a Villa player who was in the picture there who probably was covering and uh, I think Villa fans might well have a feeling there's some justification that that sending off is a very harsh one Humphrey Saunders knocking it down for Houghton. York playing it in again. Atkinson! A wonderful goal! What a strike by Dalian Atkinson. And the Villa fans worried that their side were down to 10 men. Certainly have plenty to cheer now. taken superbly and absolutely giving uh, Nigel Martin not a glimmer of a chance played in by Dwight York smacked on the half volley by Dalian Atkinson, 1-0 Villa well, that's a real test for both of them here tonight for Brian Little's side down to 10 men, can they hang on to the lead and Alan Smith's side will certainly want to overcome the embarrassment of uh, falling to 10 men Dalian Atkinson is struggling and will go off and Fenton will come on so Graham Fenton on for Aston Villa Southgate Dean Gordon the half-time whistle Villa down to 10 men but going in at the interval leading uh, with a goal from Dalian Atkinson, what a good one it was. Face a second half then that is full of possibilities. Can Villa hold on with ten men? Can Palace come back and get back into this Coca-Cola Cup tie? 1-0 to Villa is the half-time situation. So Villa get the second half underway. Get the feeling when this competition comes round, Villa just sniff the air. They've got such a good record, their holders, they were the first winners in 1961 and they've won it three times since then. There's Armstrong. Solarko's made a good break and Solarko! My goodness! He was just a whisker away from getting a really dramatic equaliser for Paris right at the start of the second half. Great run by Armstrong and a great cross too. Palace's throw, he looks up, there's his cross. There's the sliding Solarco, missing it by a whisper. King gets it clear. Up 
up towards Chris Armstrong, but it's a throw to Crystal Palace. They were certainly looking to pile the pressure onto uh, ten man Aston Villa in the second half. King bringing down Armstrong. More of an untidy tumble than anything else, but worthy of a free kick. Salako and Newman over it. The odds are on Salako. Crossing it in! And Armstrong with a glancing header and the delight of Chris Coleman there in the goal as Palace bring it back to 1-1. There's the free kick. There's the number nine's glancing header, inch perfect. What a good shot. Armstrong getting it on. Salako, the flag has stayed down. Still with Salako. He looks around, Salako can't believe it. Salako thought about a shot himself and then saw Armstrong beautifully placed on the other side of the six-yard area. He looks up there, picks out Armstrong, and that's what happens. What a crazy game it is. A wonderful header from Armstrong a moment ago and a simple tap-in for number two, and he misses that one. Alan Smith wanting more effort. He must be pleased, though, with the way Palace have come out in this second half. Well, it's what you might call a mixed night for him. Not sure, actually, the same more effort. He might well have been saying to Chris Armstrong, get your head up. Here's Armstrong. Looking to see if he can play anybody in. And his shot was just wide of the target. And it was a good shot on the turn. Struck with some venom. McGrath. There's Newman. Priest touching it back. Barry touching it forward. Armstrong on the run again. Salako up with him. Oh, he's done well. He's got away from Barrett. The cross comes in! It's Southgate! And it's 2-1 to Palace! Well, the manager looks on with pleasure, I would think. Chris Armstrong kept his head up. He's had his problems with that miss earlier on in this half, but he outwitted Earl Barrett here, and Southgate made a wonderful late run to arrive there to make it 2-1 Palace. Foul by Coleman. Well, these are situations that have to be watched very closely by Palace and they've got everybody except Chris Armstrong back. Oh, my goodness, the shot by Phil King that somehow was squeezed wide by Nigel Martin that came through a crowd of players. He could only have seen that at a last split second. Not at that by uh, the Palace defence and a great piece of goalkeeping there by Nigel Martin. Parker with the corner. Fenton playing it for King. Dinked in again by him, too high. Oh, that might have gone anywhere. Good ball actually played there by Parker, but in the end it profited Villa not a bit. Houghton playing it in. This should be Martin's ball, and he's lost it, and it's hooked away by Southgate. But it's gone to Barry. Sending Armstrong down that right flank again. Barry feeds some lovely balls in there. That wasn't quite as good this time by Armstrong. You get the feeling there still have to be goals in this game. It's 2-1 to Palace. 
Gordon hitting it long. Armstrong on the far side. It's another corner. It's a super cup tie. With good football coming from both sides. Palace leading 2-1. Priest and Barry in there. Armstrong waiting to launch himself. So too is Coleman. It's Coleman trying to get the header on that one. Southgate has made it free. And that's a goal that might well put Crystal Palace into the quarterfinals. They're making a habit of this. And they now lead 3-1. Three or four Villa players going for it, but nobody guarding that post. And Southgate turning it in with eight great, without great power, but with great accuracy. And Palace go 3-1 up. Gareth Southgate's getting his second of the night. Oh, that could be trouble. And in the end, the Saunders couldn't get possession, but it's a dangerous ball played out by Nigel Martin then. And with a couple of minutes to go in a cup tie like this, I would have thought the safest thing was to do just what he's going to do now. Armstrong. Oh, super goal! Four one. Sheer strength and persistence there, and a whiplash finish at the end of it all as Villa floundered. Four one, Palace, and there's no holding him now. York was beaten and so was Bosnich the ball finds the net again and Palace are home and dry final whistle the best night of the season for Crystal Palace no question of that 4-1 winners here a match really with two turning points the sending off of Biocchio which really put Villa back on their heels though they went ahead through Atkinson and then Armstrong struck right at the start of the second half and that was the second turning point, the Palace blitz in the first 15 minutes when they turned the game around and scored twice and then carried on with an excellent second half performance to score two after that. Armstrong two and Southgate two, the scorers for Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace four, Aston Villa one. Was there a worry in your mind at some stage that the ten men might do you? Um, well, there was in, in actual fact because I thought we dominated the game throughout um, and they only had the one chance in the first half which, which wasn't even a chance really and Daniel Atkinson finished it superbly and you do see the ten men come through so often. But in the end, it, it was nothing short of a comprehensive win for you. Yeah, um, I think probably the extra man told, you know, their legs started to go a wee bit. Um, and this is a big competition for us. It's realistically our only chance of winning something this season. Um, and all the boys were keyed up for it. Your manager said that uh, if you won this one, he reckoned you'd go all the way. What do you reckon to that? Well, I don't see why not. A lot of the big sides are out. Um, if we get a favourable draw in the next round, it, 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 we're quarter-finals, two games from Wembley, um, and it means an awful lot to the boys in there. I'm not making any excuses. I think uh, I'd like to have, I'd like to think I could have had more input into the side and into how we've prepared for this game and even the game at Sunday, even though that was quick. I'd like to think I could have done more in my, my own preparation with the guys. Um, but uh, I'm not making excuses. Um, the situation is there. I would like it to go away. I've said that on many occasions. I've said that privately and publicly. Um, hopefully it will. And hopefully, as I've said before the game, I can get on with, with what is a very hard job and, and working hard to try and do something constructive and to be successful there. Well, Ian, early you had your say about Brian Little, but yeah. really the sending off of Echiog proved crucial for the holders, didn't it? Well, there's always turning points in games, and probably that one, Bob, was a turning point. And uh, it's one of those incidents that, again, will have people talking. You know, we'll, we'll see here now when the ball is very badly cleared by the goalkeeper there. That was ridiculous. But watch here now. Look for the cover player at the top of your picture. Would he have got round in time to get a, to get a tackle in? I don't think he would have done. I think the forward would have had the shot off before he came round the other way. You're not saying that because it's Paul McGrath and he's getting on a bit aged. <laughs> I'll tell him what you said. <laughs> <laughs> I think he might have got there, you see. That's one of those crucial ones, isn't it? I think he might have been well, there. Well, this is the interpretation some referees have. They would say, well, the cover player would have got the tackle in, would have got the tackle in, and then make a decision whether it's a yellow card or a red card. You may say he was unlucky. You say, well, you know, 
That's yeah. the way it's the interpretation of some referees. In the end, it was conclusive. Two yes. goals to Chris Armstrong, who's had a little bit of a dry patch. He could have got three or four. He missed an absolute Jeez, sitter he, as well. He but missed a barrel, though, didn't he, yeah. really? And I mean, clear-cut chances. I, I like Armstrong. I've always said that. I think he's a terrific player. And as you say, he's been going through a little dry spell. You know, in fact, he's only scored four goals this season so far, so up to this point. So it was nice for him to get a couple at least on the night. This is their final goal now. He shrugs off Dwight York there. Too much strength for Dwight. But again, you see, that's a case of a forward back in a defensive position. And as you well know, once forwards get back there, I mean, they're useless. So he just shove. shoves them off there and tucks it away in the corner. Alan Smith's doing a terrific job at Palace, I think. Uh, could they have a, a run in this? Well, you, well, I mean, but here we are, Bob, down to the quarter-final, so they, you know, see who they pull out the hat uh, tomorrow morning. But I do like the way Palace play, yes. Yeah. Thanks, Ian. Well, now to Highbury, still reeling from the Paul Merson drugs revelations, and where on the field the Arsenal team are currently in a very mediocre patch of form in the Premiership. Certainly not the best of times to face a Sheffield Wednesday side who have one thing only on their minds, and that's to avenge their 2-1 defeat at the hands of Arsenal in the final the season before last. Commentary this time from Chris McManamy and a slightly croaky John Helm. It's a lovely night for football in one of Europe's most opulent stadiums. And let's straight away get into tonight's teams. Starting with Sheffield Wednesday, no Des Walker, he's suspended. And again, no Hurst, no Waddle and no Mark Bright suffering from an Achilles problem which he hopes will have cleared by the weekend. Peter Atherton covers for Walker, with Ian Taylor coming in on the right side of midfield. The versatile Chris Bart Williams, a scorer in both previous rounds, has a striking role tonight alongside Gordon Watson. Arsenal too have their problems, but Tony Adams postpones an Achilles tendon operation to play tonight, and one Scandinavian international, Sweden's World Cup star Stefan Schwartz, replaces another, Denmark's John Jensen. Kevin Campbell is back in attack to partner Ian Wright. The prolific Wright tormented Wednesday in the Wembley finals and scored the winning goals in both league meetings last season. Referee Martin Boddenham from Lewin Cornwall was last year when Villa beat Arsenal 2-1 last season. But if Wednesday fans think that's a good omen, I'd better warn them. The last time he took Wednesday, they lost 5-0 to Manchester United. It's a very colourful scene. Wednesday in the blue and white stripes, obviously. Arsenal in Paris, the most famous club strip in the world. The red and white, the Gunners, and here straight away is Gordon Watson for Wednesday. Bold. Well, we were talking just before the kickoff. We said there didn't look to be many in, but strangely, they all appeared uh, two or three minutes before kickoff, and there now does look to be quite a good crowd here. Should be uh, easy enough for Dixon this, as it were. And on the go for it. Back from Alan Smith. So, got the best directed past that one from McGoldrick and it enables Sheridan to move forward he's onside here great chance for Wednesday see he's past Seaman Bart Williams oh what a miss and what a shame for Sheffield Wednesday Bart Williams had timed the run to perfection Sheridan found him in the space after he got past Seaman you really fancied him we've got to say that's a bad miss he's done all the hard work here drew the keeper took it round him it's just underneath his foot there the last moment just got stuck underneath his foot but you've got to say that's a, a poor miss from a, a good player Watson, it was a bit short and it's enabled Adams to knock one in, he was quickly up there, didn't look laboured that time. Watson doing well to bring the ball down into the prep of Sinton, space down the left to feed Nolan in maybe, and Sinton does find Nolan, it was a brilliant ball, and this must be a goal surely for Wednesday, cleared off the line, and I don't think Ian Taylor can believe it, that looked an absolute certainty of a goal. Well, if ever a team deserved the ball, a goal for a bit of good football, it was here. Great ball inside the fullback, wonderful first-time ball across the box, and doesn't seem to do well. He just gets a body in the way of the ball, and the defender clears it. But a great chance through some very good football. Smith, McGoldrick held back. Just so he wasn't offside, only right in the middle. Here goes Alan Smith. Well, that's wayward. Petrescu has come across from right to left. Rested down by Watson. Sheridan has a great break on here. He's got two inside. Sheridan aims to tuck it in. Bart Williams. He's missed the target again. 
Well, he's had two guilt-edged opportunities to score and has fritted them both. Another good break from the middle. A ball slipped across. Is there a bobble here? No, no bobble. He's just hit it over the top. High from Seaman. Campbell's there. Sheridan to Watson. Goldrick stretching and then taking it back from Dixon. Here goes Morrow. Trying to contrive the space for the shot. What a goal! Well, he's really got it in for Sheffield Wednesday, this fella. Oh, extraordinary. Two goals in his career in this country, both against Sheffield Wednesday. That was a better one than the one at Wembley. Well, he's finished it ever so well, but look at the defending here from Sheffield Wednesday. Kevin Preston has gone absolutely livid. And I think he should as well because he's gone through four or five challenges there. The finish is excellent, but should he have got there in the first place? He goes one way, he twists. Sheridan's not round the cover. He gets past Sheridan, and he's now got the space to clip it. And he bends it over the top of Preston. The goal coming right on the half-hour mark, and how Wednesday must be ruining those three chances that they've squandered. How Wednesday could do with an equaliser before the break. They have 14 minutes left in which to get one. Sinton's calling for the ball out on the left. Here goes Bart Williams. He's still there, Bart Williams. Here's Sinton, it could be. Misses by a foot. Four good chances missed. They are just not getting it right inside well, the six-yard box. The staff were holding their heads on the bench as this didn't go in. Another chance. Bart Williams did well to get the ball down to Sinton, but he's pulled it wide from again a great position he's around about the penalty spot when he hits it no more than 12 yards out and the defender did well to get across him but should hit the target Campbell did well to close Taylor down there just seemed to amble a little bit and I think he's getting a bit of a volley is Ian Taylor from Richie Barker? I saw him come out into the touchline to give him a bit of a rocket. Here come Arsenal wanting a second goal. He might get one as well. Right waiting. He scores. Typical lead and right, but how much time did they want to give him? You cannot give a player like Ian Wright all that time inside the penalty area. The ball was in the air in eternity. Well, again, you've got to say the finish, the technical finish was great, but look at the time the ball's in the air. Three, four defenders around, nobody gets a foot across, and it ends up in the back of the net. Predictable for me and right, but look at the defending. How long is that ball in the air? It's coming down, it's coming down. Still nobody gets a foot across. Ian Taylor was the closest, and it's 2-0. Ooh, Pressman. Oh, dearie me, dearie me. He's just managed to retrieve himself from the most acute embarrassment of his career. That would have been a nightmare for him. Well, Kevin Pressman's predominantly left-footed and the ball's knocked onto his right foot and his first touch isn't as good on that side as you can see. And he does ever so well to recover here, but maybe he should have took a chance and swung the right foot. Sheridan, now Wednesday move forward together as a unit. It's like the charge of the light brigade. Almost too many of them. They got in each other's way. Sheridan nicks it through. Here's a great chance now for Taylor. And he's unable to take it. And Wednesday continue to miss the chances that they're creating. Away goes McGoldrick. Smith now. He's got to get it through. McGoldrick's on side. Lights across goal. McGoldrick might try to do it all himself. He does. And a thrilling save from Pressman. You see three players around the ball, one man free for Arsenal, he pushes it forward, he carries on, looking across the goal, look at Ian Wright, he's on his own, he wants the square ball, elects to shoot, and Freshman does well to get a hand to it. And it's Bart Williams, Watson, nicking it in here for Petrescu, Petrescu wins a corner. It's 50 today, happy birthday George, it looks like being a happy one. David Seaman is the one in trouble. I saw him holding his side a couple of minutes ago, and I think he probably thought he might just make it through to half time, but uh, not certain. And the England goalkeeper goes off to a round of applause. He's given a brave display tonight, and it gives a chance to the summer signing from Bournemouth for £400,000, Vince Barton.
when you've got to get this ball in uh, it didn't work out for them Atherton Nolan up towards Watson and here's the first chance for Bartram he's made a mess of it and Taylor might well have made it a very nervous start for Vince Bartram well something tells you that the luck is on Arsenal's side tonight when a punch like that falls to a man and it, he then gets a block on Half time at Highbury, not a good half for Sheffield Wednesday. Stephen Morrow has repeated his Coca Cola goal against Sheffield Wednesday and the 25th League Cup goal of Ian Wright's career. Give us a half time scoreline here of Arsenal 2, Sheffield Wednesday 0. Ask ahead in the next 45 minutes if they're to erase the memory of the fact that they've not won on this ground for 32 years. Two down and already Campbell's going to get inside the penalty area so a turn inside Petrescu Morrow for Winterburn and we're headed out as far as Stefan Schwartz who hasn't had a big influence on the game to be fair dispossessed by Sheridan Watson turning bolt nicely but uh, one back by Morrow or rather given to Morrow Smith from Adams Right, instinctively tries to play McGoldrick in. It was a good ball, and they cross, seeks out right again. It has to be put behind by Atherton. Sheffield Wednesday already in trouble. Well, he's got problems tonight, hasn't he, Trevor Francis? Well, I don't know where it's Sheffield Wednesday fans, but uh, Arsenal haven't conceded a goal yet in this competition so far this season. They beat Hartlepool 5 0 and 2 0, and Oldham 2 0 after a goalless draw. And they're 2-0 up now and very much on the attack here with Alan Smith oh great ball in here's Wright fabulous bit of football that stemming from Alan Smith's turn and cross and highlighted by Ian Wright's header and a great save a tremendous deep cross by Alan Smith there and trying to get power on it but Pressman does well to his right but great link up play between Campbell initially Smith and then Ian Wright McGoldrick Smith McGoldrick two in the middle waiting McGoldrick oh good bit of trickery from him and a save again from Pressman from Kevin Campbell this time yes does ever so well holds the ball till oh. the time's right clips the ball in good good connection by Campbell but again doesn't really trouble Pressman and he's hobbling off well, that might present some relief for Wednesday. Arsenal down to 10 men for the minute. Still plenty of good movement from Wednesday. And uh, Taylor just delayed his run there. If he'd have gone a second or two earlier, he might have got something. It's going to be a Wednesday free kick here in a good position. And now it's Winterman who looks to be in trouble. Only for a second. The Wednesday fans there didn't like that. Ian Wright's back on, by the way, just before this free kick from Sheridan. Short, Petrescu hits it. Oh, and a fine save by Bartram. It was sneaking inside the left upright. Well struck by the Romanian and well saved by Bartram. A touch of class from Petrescu. Doesn't just blast it, picks his spot, but Bartram's equal to it. Here's a good cross in, and there's the header flicked over by Bartram. Well, he can do no wrong now. Ian Taylor for the second time, a shake of the head, and says, how did it stay out? First clear chance for Sheffield Wednesday in this second half. A great ball with pace whipped into the box. Taylor does well to get a touch on it. And what a good save from the standing goalkeeper. Keon loses it this time. Here goes Ryan Jones. Now Wednesday do have plenty of people up there. Bart Williams, Sheridan sliding it down for Petrescu here. The cross is a deep one. Well, that's incredible. Graham White's effort kept out on the line by Lee Dixon. It looks a certain goal again there for Wednesday. And it's just not happening for them. And now it finally goes over from Bart Williams. And now it's Graham Hyde's turn to look in disbelief. Well, he can't believe it neither can the rest of the team it just sums up possibly the misfortune they've had on the night here great far post ball takes all the defenders out of the game good connection with the header and you've got to say that's a great defending position from Lee Dixon 
I don't know why George Graham's shaking his head. He should be happy enough with the result. Some Arsenal players have had very adverse criticism over the past week or so, but George Graham has had the perfect birthday present for them. Trevor Francis goes away there, though, knowing that he's got more problems. The only thing open to Sheffield Wednesday this season now is the FA Cup. Two first-half goals from Steve Morrow and Ian Wright have consigned Sheffield Wednesday to another defeat against their bogey side. Arsenal 2, Sheffield Wednesday nil. Georgie will turn, all turn out right in the end, but it could have been a very different story, that one. Yeah, I mean, uh, the first quarter, now 20 minutes, they had some tremendous chances. And when you're that much on top, you get the chances, you don't take them, it worries you. And uh, I was delighted after 20 minutes still to be in the game. But after that, uh, we scored a couple. The game actually could have finished about 7-5 or 6-4. Uh, against against the Sheffield Wednesday, normally there's very few chances. Tonight it was completely different. There was lots of chances by both teams. A very nice birthday present for you. At the end of a difficult week for the club. Yeah, we've been in, uh, we've been in the media in front of the media quite a bit. Uh, but we've answered, you know, we answered in the way we normally answer. You know, we group together, uh, keep it in house. Uh, we come out, you know, uh, as a unit. Great camaraderie, great team spirit, and uh, over the ta last two games, it's uh, it showed that that up. Well, George was very honest there, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. and, and his 50th birthday presents really came early on when Wednesday missed the chances that he mentioned. They missed two or three, didn't they? Well, uh, two or three. I mean, they, I mean, they, they must have missed seriously six good chances in the whole of the game. In the whole of the game, yeah. in all context. Of but the game. when it was nil-nil, they missed two or three, well, didn't they? I mean, you know, Arsenal, you have to say we're very fortunate. I won't use the word lucky. They were very fortunate <laughs> early on in the game. Uh, because on Wednesday, the team that they are, they're knocking the ball around, you know, precision passing, good movement. And they got themselves, to Park Williams here, goes around the keeper. Now you think, well, there you are, 1 0, bang. And he goes in this side now. Being driven wide a little bit there. Well, but Bob, I mean, I know he's driven wide a little bit, you know, and you score his, give the, the goalkeeper credit for not doing anything rash in that position, but from there, surely to goodness, he's got to get it in. Now, this was, another, this was a great save. This was a super save, wasn't it? Taylor on the, on the back post there, just going to knock it in. Wonderful. But Arsenal had lots of chances, as George said, six or seven, and what a goal from Steve Morrow. It's only his second in, in about seven <laughs> minutes. Second in seven years. Lovely skill ball, wasn't it? He, he turned, using the outside of the foot, turned everybody, and then just sort of bent it around the top corner. Really and of course, he's the man who got the winner in the league in the Coca-Cola final two years ago. Uh, that's right. Now, th they'll be disappointed Wednesday with this goal because, uh, you know, it was mentioned in the commentary there that uh, Ian Wright had a lot of time here. When the ball's up in there, the defenders have got to attack the ball. They've got to be out there and get it. Now, he's watching as he can't believe his luck. Down it comes and he volleys it. I mean, surely he would have to have gone and headed it under a little bit of pressure. But there you go, bad defending by the Wednesday, mm. and, they, and they can't score themselves, they're missing all the, the I noticed in George's quotes afterwards, he said it's been his most difficult time since they lost to Benfica in the European Cup two or three seasons back, uh -huh. and that's obviously because of the morale and people getting sure. at them, the league form's not being good. Uh -huh. Well, there's, there's, there's lots of things uh, going against us at the moment, but they're a, they're a you know, gutsy team, aren't they? And, and I think they'll, they'll you know, gel together. But there again. was some good football in that game, wasn't there? Oh, lovely really football, good, I really thoroughly enjoyed it, yeah, it was yeah. good. Yeah, six six seven seven. It could have been. <laughs> yeah. Now then, any cup tie between West Ham United and Bolton Wanderers is sure to revive memories of the famous meeting between the two clubs in Wembley's first great occasion back in 1923. Seventy-one years on, it's First Division Bolton who have built up a bit of a reputation for upsetting the odds. So a tough test for the Hammers, who have Alvin Martin, Martin Allen, and Tim Breaker out injured, and Don Hutchison suspended. So Dutchman Euren Borry gets his first game of the season. And Matthew Rush is preferred to Mike Marsh. Bolton keep faith with Jason McAteer, Alan Stubbs and John McGinley, who returned to the side last Saturday. Gary Bloom is the commentator. Monkey. Dix joining the attack now. Bishop now for West Ham United. And a couple of feet away. Well, this is stirring into quite a cap tie. Bishop had that meaty shot on goal. And he whacked it in from about 25 yards. Thompson now. Looking at Petalainen. Thompson again. Oh, 
the intent was clear. Pick out John McGinley who drifted into the inside right channel and still little to choose between the two teams. Probably West Ham have enjoyed the greatest share of midfield supremacy in the opening quarter of an hour. So free kick to Bolt. Coleman's up inside the penalty area. This one from Miklosko is under pressure from Patalainen and West Ham were looking to the referee to award them a free kick and Bolton have scored through John McGinley. Now, was there a foul on the goalkeeper as Patalainen challenged Ludek Miklosko? The West Ham goalkeeper certainly seemed impeded, but it dropped right in front of John McGinley, who scores his 11th of the season. Nix. Twisting away from Snakers, into Bishop. Bishop looking for border on the back post. Brannigan's lost it, and Matty Holmes can't force the ball in. That was a really muscular header by the Dutchman. Jeroen Bora and Brannigan just couldn't hang on to the ball now yeah, can Dix find a path to go Stubbs heads it down towards Rush sure. oh, well timed volley by Matthew Rush it's the closest West Ham have come to a goal in 35 minutes of football Phillips can keep the ball alive and then pick out Stubbs. McGinley. All the way through to David Lee once again, chief tormentor of West Ham. Batalainen. McGinley! Oh, it was an audacious attempt on goal. It almost crept in at the corner. Petalainen hung in the air and created that opening for McGinley. Now Coleman could be caught out of position here. Cotty rolled in towards Morley with his first significant touch since coming on as a substitute. Rush with the cross. Oh, and a diving header by Bora is well wide of the target. It was a wonderful ball in here by Rush, and Bora should have scored. Lee. Into and tried to find McGinley. Here comes Thompson, it took a deflection, and almost ran into the path of Petter Leinen. Bolton was so dangerous on the counter thrust. That opportunity was presented to them by Adrian Whitbread. So Coleman is up on the near post to cause maximum problems for West Ham. And Mikloshko once again has come off his line and not got the ball. This is Lee, and it's 2-0. It could be the punch which sends Bolton through to the fifth round. Again, it was a goalkeeping mistake by Miklosko. He came off his line. It was steered into the path of Lee. And will it go down as an own goal? I think Lee will claim it. Morley. Cotty, he's through and he's missed it. Oh, he snatched hungrily at the chance. This really was a wasteful opportunity for Tony Cotty. Snakers, his pass monk. Oh dear me! What was Julian Dix thinking about? A two-footed wild lunge brings Julian Dix his customary yellow card. Too many dissenting voices when Paul Durkin showed Dix the yellow card. Thompson takes the free kick. And a solid header by Petalin and is held by Ludic Miklosko. The 
appeared to be a handball there by Julian Dix. What on earth was he thinking about? What a bizarre incident as Julian Dix rose to get the ball, his left arm shot up and he quite literally is handed Bolton a penalty, it was his right hand in fact McGinley makes it three Bolton are heading to the last day to the Coca-Cola Cup but McGinley picks up his second goal of the game Dix Snakers is back on his feet as Bishop tries to find a part to goal Cotty he's got one at last it might come too late but Cotty pulls a goal back for West Ham United with ten minutes remaining flick on by Bora and there was Cotty to just flick the ball in they finished 3-1 to Bolton they've done it again a sixth big scout for them and, and Bruce Freak still unhappy <laughs> <laughs> well but isn't it amazing you know that a, a, a club get you know a, the, the scent of cups in the nostrils and they're fantastic Bolton you know they, they knock all the big boys down and, but you have to say West Ham will be very disappointed with that result really. Have you got any idea how Julian Dick stayed on the field? Well the tackle that he got booked for <laughs> was a kamikaze job I thought he would have gone for that one but then he handled the ball for the penalty kick which deliberate handball is that not a, a yellow card? I think uh, I think he's lucky to I, stay well, I would and think that's so, being yes. very kind to him here. <laughs> right Five more fourth round ties to round up now with Gabriel Clark. Millwall fifth from bottom in Division 1 went to Nottingham Forest, fifth in the Premiership. But Forest were dealt a blow when their former Millwall centre-half, Colin Cooper, was forced off injured early on. And his old team went on to make the most of it. Here's Alan Parry. It's Stevens, the Millwall captain, one of their great stalwarts, around the penalty spot for the free kick. Dave Mitchell just behind him. Gone straight in, what a remarkable goal! Greg Berry has given Millwall the lead. Crossley stunned, and those Millwall supporters cannot believe the start their team have made here. The merest of touches, and Berry has given Millwall a shot lead. Beard. There's more shape and pattern to the Millwall play at the moment than Nottingham Forests. In fairness to Forest, they have been disrupted by those early injuries. And suddenly the ball is presented to Perry, who could make it number two, and has done so. Sheffield's mistake, and Berry accepts the gift, and Millwall lead 2-0. Phillips has got forward on the left. And it's a good looking cross too, and it's a tremendous header, and it's in by Lee. No, it isn't, it's kept out. Amazing. How on earth did that not go in? It still could, Colin Moore. And the Millwall goal remains intact in the most incredible fashion. How on earth did Forrest not pull a goal back here? Phillips set up all the mayhem. Wone with the header against the underside of the bar. Look where Keller was there, and that looked as though it might well have gone in, but somehow or other, Keller managed to scoop it away. 2 0, it's the sixth straight game Forrest have failed to score in, but what a great win for Mick McCarthy, who's been under a bit of pressure this season. I think the timing of that result is, is superb tonight. Having lost three games going into it, and we're fifth bottom of the league, we're not enjoying the best of luck in the league. It's a clean sheet as well, so the timing of it would suggest it's the best result for a long time. What an anniversary for Ian Rush, making his 600th Liverpool appearance. Here's Rob Palmer. Now Fowler. Back to Rush. Good shot from Rush! Oh! Your heart out, Shearer and Sutton. Only one thing on 
Ian Rush's mind when the ball came to him to find the back of the net and that was sweet Scales header Blackburn defenders look up for the flag there isn't one Rush is going for goal Rush has found goal Ian Rush scorer supreme in the chance it'll give you a goal Dornaby looking for Rush he's looking for a hat-trick will he get it? oh yes he will a gift goal after two stunners for Ian Rush and he's edging towards a League Cup scoring record and Matt Newell the most impossible of tasks to come on and try and uh, impress the manager and the rest of his teammates are so low but they've got a consolation goal Chris Sutton his 17th goal of the season and to strikers all goals mean an awful lot but a certain empty feeling inside the Blackburn players no histrionics from Chris Sutton the first division's basement club Notts County conquerors of Spurs and Ozzy Ardiles couldn't scale those heights again 43 seconds in at Carrow Road, Darren Eady puts Norwich ahead. It was enough to win it. Injuries cost Kevin Keegan 10 first-team players for Newcastle's tie at Manchester City, but it didn't look like too much of a crisis at Main Road. Two of the call-ups combined early on. Alan Nielsen headed on, and Mike Jeffrey, signed from Doncaster last year, scored his first Newcastle goal. It was enough for an hour. Pavel Cernicek had been outstanding but he could do little to stop Uwe Rossler on his sub. The Germans are real favourites with the City fans these days. His sixth of the season means a replay in the North East in three weeks' time. The former Manchester City midfielder Steve McMahon took charge of his first game as Swindon Town's new player manager. His motivational skills had worked the trick inside ten minutes. Jan Fjortoft put Swindon ahead. After their impressive win at Wolves on Sunday, Derby were the favourites to make the last eight. They were level by half-time. Young Mark Stallard followed up his first goal for the club at Molyneux with another. McMahon, watching from the bench, saw his side hang on for long spells after that. But a change of manager can sometimes mean a change of luck. With six minutes left, Fjortov won it. It's a real touch of class from the Norwegian international and a great start for McMahon. So these are tonight's results from the Coca-Cola Cup fourth round. Arsenal 2, Sheffield Wednesday 0, Blackburn 1, Liverpool 3, Crystal Palace 4, Aston Villa 1, Manchester City 1, Newcastle United 1, Norwich City 1, Notts County 0, Nottingham Forest 0, Millwall 2, Swindon 2, Derby 1, West Ham 1, Bolton 3. One game in the Ensley League Division 1, Portsmouth nil, Stoke 1. The win takes Stoke into 10th position. In the auto windscreen shield, northern section second leg, Huddersfield 3, Lincoln 2. Huddersfield made history by becoming the first side to win with a sudden death goal early in extra time. In the Scottish Premier League Division, Hibernian 1, Celtic 1. And finally, a reminder, you can see the draw for the quarterfinals of the Coca-Cola Cup live tomorrow morning on GMTV with the Saint at 7.20. Well, three First Division teams in that draw tomorrow morning and uh, Millwall, Ian, one of the results of the night. We, we yes. were unable to do them real justice there, but it was a great performance. I think it was a super performance. You know, the way things have been going in the league to go up to Forest, albeit Forest are not playing too well at the moment. They're in a, a bit of a bad run. But to go there and win 2-0, terrific. For Big Mick. Now then, a great win, obviously, for your old club Liverpool yes. at Blackburn. Uh -huh. uh, and there was an incident that we didn't see in that game, supposedly between two really good friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, all I can say with, with friends like this, who needs enemies? There was Shearer and, and Ruddock, who were big pals down at Southampton. And with play. England. And with England. Watch them here. And I think here Ruddock stamps on, on his leg when, he, when Shearer fell. And that's what incensed Shearer. Now he got up. And, you know, if we're given red cards and yellow cards, what are we getting for strangling people? Because, I mean, he went for his throat there and was strangling him. Now, really, the two of them only got, at the end of the day, you know, a yellow card out of it. And if you look at, look at Shearer here, eh? 
<laughs> you've got to, yeah. I mean, it is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean it, do, it does make you laugh. Except those uh, two players should have been in the dressing room. Well, I they? think so. I mean, if, if the referee is going to do his job right, he's got to say, "Well, come on, lads. You know, we can't have this." And uh, off you go and have an early bath. Mm. You know, and have a chat. Lots about of it inconsistencies again with the. Well, we've looked at it again tonight, Bob. We've seen, you know, the tackle from behind. We've seen this kind of thing. We've seen the whole thing. And referees, you know, are always getting a bit of stick at the moment. We're, we're certainly not getting consistency, are we? Yeah. Let's have a quick look at the quarter finalists. Uh, yes. Those you'd pick out. Obviously, there are big names there. Notably, Liverpool, who will become the favourites yes. after that win. Well, and three, Arsenal are still there. Arsenal, three, three London teams, w w which are terrific. You know, Millwall, Palace, Arsenal. So, I mean, that, that's good for the capital that they've got uh, three teams in it. Uh, and also, when you look at it the, from the Ensley League, you know, we've got Millwall, Swindon and Bolton. So, I mean, it's good for the Ensley League, isn't it? Yeah. It's a good quarter-final draw, isn't it? Oh, I, yeah. I'm looking forward to getting up early for it, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be up with you, Ian, as well. Well, now, the replay of tonight's drawn tie between Manchester City and Newcastle. That'll be featured on Carlton Sport in three weeks' time, when we'll also have a competition with the top prize of a trip for two to the Rugby World Cup next May to watch England. That's courtesy of South African Airways holidays. Also looking ahead, there's a Champions League special on Saturday at ten past one, previewing next Wednesday's live game, an important one, of course, from Old Trafford between Manchester United and Galatasaray. The Saints soccer skills, well, they can be seen again this weekend on Saturday and Sunday afternoons with Millwall versus Wolves, the Sunday match. That's at 2.45 live from the New Den. And as always, all the Ensley League goals on Monday night at 10 past one in Ensley League Extra. As for tonight, London clubs have fared pretty well. Defeat for West Ham, but convincing victories for Arsenal, Crystal Palace, and particularly so for First Division Millwall. From Ian and myself, good night. And ducks and geese better scurry. Or maybe not. Who is the dog? You are. True love at last. Meg Ryan and Billy Crystal. When Harry met Sally. Sunday at ten past nine on BBC One. Are you comfortable? Sure. John Wayne stars in the late film here on BBC One now, and there's trouble for the Duke when his boys decide that they've got to do what a man's got to do. Somebody's coming, Ben. Yeah, how many? Don't know, couldn't tell. Just one. I think I know him. So?